Hi, my name is Dave from TightLinesFlyFishing.com. This afternoon we're going to tie a pheasant tail soft tackle. The materials we're going to use for this fly, a pheasant tail. We're going to use some copper wire, fine copper wire, some gray dubbing, and one dun colored hackle. It's a really simple fly, um, but I fish it quite a bit. I find it really effective when the uh, blue winged olives are on. And I fish it two different ways during that hatch. Uh, the first way I fish it is actually as a nymph. I'll fish it behind a beadhead fly and just upstream nymph with it under an indicator. And the second way I find is if fish are refusing your duns, I'll take this fly and I'll grease my leader all the way up to the fly so that the fly just hangs in the surface film and actually fish it to rising fish. And I find that to be particularly effective. So to get started, um, we're going to start our thread, and by the way, the hook that I'm using is a Tiemco 2457. This is about a size 16. I generally tie these flies in size 14 through 18, uh, with 16 probably being my most popular. So I'm going to start my thread right behind the hook eye, and I'm going to wind it down to just at the bend of the hook. Trim my thread, and I'm going to select some nice pheasant tails. And I'm going to, for this size fly, I'm probably going to get about uh, four or five of these fibers and cut it right at the stem. I'm going to try and keep my tips as even as I possibly can, and I'm going to tie them in with a sh relatively short tail, maybe half the size of the shank of the hook. I'm just going to put two turns of thread on that just to hold it for now. Then I'll take my copper wire and I'll tie that in. Again, with just two or three turns of thread. And then what I like to do is I like to take my pheasant tail and just double it back over itself so I don't have a gap when I start wrapping that forward as my body. And then I'll just bring my thread forward. And I do build up the body a little bit because where I doubled that pheasant tail back over itself, it's going to be a little bit thicker. So I just try and even it out with thread. Stop about a third of the way back from the hook eye. Then I take my pheasant tail and I'll build my body. Just wrap that forward. Tie it off. I'll take my copper wire and I'll counter wrap that just for some added flash as well as some durability to the pheasant tail. Try and space those as even as you can. I got about three turns there. Trim off my copper wire. And I just like to take my thumbnail and push that wire down so it's not going to cut my thread. Now I'll just take some gray dubbing for the thorax. I don't need a lot. I do like to have the, the thorax be a little bit wider than the, the body of the fly. Just build that up so it's just a little bit wider than the body of the fly. Now I'll take my hackle, and I'm going to strip off the bottom portion where all that webbing is. And I'm going to tie this in with the convex side towards me. Trim my stem off, and I'm just going to take maybe two turns with this hackle. I don't want a whole lot of hackle, so two turns at the most. Tie that off.
Trim that off. Then I'll take my fingers and just hold that hackle towards the rear of the hook, towards the bend of the hook. Take a couple of turns back over, just so that hackle is angled towards the back. Put my whip finish in. And then I can cut my thread. I think what happens when this hackle gets wet, it almost forms an air bubble between the thorax and the, uh, the hackle. So if you can take a look, you can see the 360 degree view of that. And that's a real good imitation for a, a beta submerger.